Hey everybody, my name is Dave. I'm with Hortitech Greenhouse. In this video, we are going to give you a comprehensive guide on how to pull six mil double poly on a greenhouse. We're gonna go through everything, showing you how to install your inflation kits, how to install channel, how to install wiggle wire, the things to do to make sure that your plastic gets installed correctly so you don't damage your poly and you actually get the full lifespan of your system. It's time to film the filming. So the beginning of that is going to be to get your ropes prepped. So we've got pull ropes. These are actually the same ropes we're gonna use to uh, use our wind retention system for our sidewall. And uh, what you'll wanna do is uh, dig in deep for your inner cowboy. And you get this thing set up in sort of a, a nice throwing fashion here. So I get all my loops going. And uh, what I'm gonna do is leave a good amount of, of slack so when I throw it, it's gonna catch. And we're gonna throw these right over the bows boom okay and then this is going to end up getting tied to our our leading edge of our plastic and we're going to actually sacrifice that whole leading edge of the plastic when we pull it over because the strength of this tensioning on that plastic is going to cause that whole edge to wrinkle so you're going to want to think about that ahead of time when you're pulling your plastic over your structure for using this technique because you're going to damage some plastic so when you get it over the structure you're going to see us pull a good amount past the bottom till that wrinkle is completely completely gone and there's none of that stretch mark over there. So we'll repeat this process. We're gonna get one more rope over there. We're gonna pull our plastic down on this, uh, this piece of scrap plastic that we laid on the ground just so that way our poly doesn't get damaged when we pull it. Three squares. Have you seen Caesar?
All right, get in the leading edge. Let's expose it. No. All right, let's give it a little. Okay, now let's pull this back a little, Jer. So we get some space. All right, I'm gonna tie us up to each of these corners. Yeah, why not, right? I mean, it's so small. Actually, it probably won't allow us to pull it over well. Probably, I'm gonna go like here. Yeah, you saw, I was thinking. I, I, you like me. <laughs> that was a th thinking position. All right, we can go over knots a little bit, but most of you don't know knots, so just tie lots. And that's the only thing you really need to know. Just wrap it around, loop it to itself a couple times. I'll show you in detail on this one, because Jared definitely doesn't know how to tie knots. Nope. So we bunch the plastic up. I usually get about, you know, a good foot or so. Are you so hell yeah. And we just take it. We're gonna wrap it around it. I do about three loops. One, just right around it, one, two, three. And then I'm gonna pull it tight. And then simple overhand knot, nothing special. I do one on the back side, tighten, and then I repeat it on the front. So uh, most of you know what an overhand knot is, but just like your shoelaces, right through, tie the knot. And I'll do that four times, so two on each side of the loop, finishing on the tall side, right? So that way when I'm yanking, I'm not yanking underneath the plastic, I'm yanking above the plastic so I can get it over that top purlin. So now we got our cinch and we can get rid of this knot easy. So we're hooked up mid-center on both sides and we're out. We're gonna go to the other side and we're yard it over. All right. Yeah, we'll give it hell. Hold on. Oh, tar nations. Take the easy road. Oh yeah, it says white men can't jump. Dave can jump. Okay, that's it. Got to get real toasty up in there. Yeah. All right, pop the ropes off. 
Actually, it kind of keeps them nice together. We'll probably just leave them, huh? Nice. We need that uh, skid steer. Before we get into wire locking the rest of the structure down, we want to do like pretty much a three point check. We want to make sure that the plastic went past the baseboard, that excess I was speaking about before. I mean, we really didn't damage the plastic on this size structure because it was so small, right? We're pulling a 20 footer over. I mean, it's, you know, it's child's play. But if we were pulling a 96 footer over, there'd be four guys pulling. We're going to be yarding the hell out of that. So. We, uh, we want to make sure we check that. In this case, we have so much extra plastic here that you know we're three feet past here. We're going to go to the other side. We're going to take a gander. We're going to make sure that that same rule has been followed on this side, that we got at least three feet extra. Thanks, Alex. And uh, you know obviously, we have more than three feet. So we did that. And then we're going to go on the inside. We're just going to inspect the plastic and make sure that we didn't destroy it when we pulled it over because if we destroyed the plastic, then, you know, better to cut your losses now and pull some new skin over than to uh, get done with the job and realize you got a big gaping hole in it. Okay. All right, so. Already feels like a greenhouse. Oh, yeah. It's like 10 degrees warmer already. Now that we've verified that we didn't screw up on the pulling of the plastic, we're gonna start by securing each end of the plastic to the end walls, getting all of the tension out. Now, with a double poly system like we're doing right now, we're not really going for what you may think is just trying to get this plastic as, uh, as tight as you can. We're going for taut, but not overly tight so that we can actually get a decent inflation. If we pull it too tight, we're not gonna get good inflation. And if we don't get good inflation, we're not gonna get good insulation. We're gonna have a low R value. So we're gonna pull it over there. We're gonna pull it semi-tight. We're not gonna worry too much about if we have a little bit of wrinkles or anything like that, because once that air inflates, it's gonna push it all clean. All right, Jared. Big bubbles. Shiv wants a big bubble. <laughs> yeah. Well, Shiv, you're gonna have one. All right, let's get the whole end wall over, Jer. Yeah, I'm good on the ladder. Hey, Jerry, let me see another wiggle. I'm just gonna get this tacked. So we're gonna tack this end first. We're gonna pick like three points. I'm gonna tack the peak. I'm gonna tack the side right above there. And then I'm gonna go to the other side and I'm gonna pull all my tension to that direction. So that way I get one even line on that side of the structure. Then I'm gonna come back to this side afterwards and I'm gonna pull the remainder out. Okay. 
All right, Jer, let's pull. Uh... Here, go ahead and pull as much plastic as you can out. I can hold myself for a second. Sure. Yep. Beautiful. not very straight with the seam. It's probably all going to inflate out though, huh? Well, no, because we got this stupid uh, TIV lettering. So let's just get it right. Jerry, go ahead down there and undo your corner. Okay. I'll hold myself. Okay, come on over here. Come over here. Support my ladder. Good. Much more better. Okay. Oh shit. Help me out. Tyler, give me a wiggle. Foot cramp. Ooh. Ooh. There we go. All right. Let me uh, start this one while I'm here. Another wiggle, Jer. I can hold myself for a second. Work our way down. Mm. 
we work the bottom layer and then the top. So I've got one hand on the bottom, one hand on the top. And I'm yarding out, then I'm pulling down. And then I'm taking my fingers and I'm seating them in here. And I'm following my hand up the profile. So you see, it's just a little bit of play. That's what you want. If this thing is a trampoline, too much, too much. Unless you somehow get the outside extremely tight and the inside a little loose, then you can have a trampoline on the outside because the inside will inflate. leave that here. We're going to work on the other side because we don't want to pull this tight because we have nothing at this point holding that tension back from it. So if I was to pull this tight, all I'm going to do is create wrinkles in the center that I can't get out. So we're going to leave it a little bit loose. We're going to get to the other side. We're going to kind of work our way down as even as we can from the peak down on both sides, pulling it tight, working it down, pulling it tight, working it down, opposing ends. And then we'll finish off these bottom sections at the end once the peaks are tight because then we kind of have a plane to work off of. We can work off of that flat centralized plane, work our way down into the corner, get these wrinkles pulled straight down to the corner, get to the other side, pull them straight down to the corner, then it'll be perfect. Can you pull that corner out from the bottom? Now, if you start working your way down and you've got this type of plastic dipped into here, you're not gonna get a good clean pull because that plastic is slightly pulling you down where you don't wanna go. It makes it harder for you. So always make sure that all your slack's over your corners so that it glides. The plastic will Plastic will tell you where it wants to lay.
So we got both ends done. Greenhouse looks beautiful. It's nice and tight. It pretty much looks like it, it, it should be finalized, right? But Jared is now putting in the top wiggle wire in the top of the double channel track. And that is gonna lock down the plastic lengthwise of the structure. And it's also gonna create a fixed point for the roll up side to roll up to. So we use our double channel wire, wire lock track here um, so that if the roll up side was to fail over time, because it is going up and down, this plastic is naturally gonna get weaker than the rest of the plastic. Its lifespan is gonna be shorter. So if your roll up side goes down, you need to replace it, guess what? Now you've got an empty piece of channel to put a whole new roll up side in without having to reskin the entire greenhouse. And that is why we use the double channel.